All right, time to talk about the big game of the week. You've got uh, Texas A&M, number 23 in the country, number 10, Arkansas. Somehow A&M favored in this game there at Jerry's World. From an Arkansas perspective, we've got Tara Talmadge, who you see often on the sidelines there on the SEC. And from a Texas A&M perspective, Ole Buchanan of TexasAgs.com, my partner. What's going on to both of you? Hello. Hey, I'm excited to be here. Uh, this is going to be a fun game, as always. OB? Looking forward to the game. Um have gone in more confident in the past uh, than I am this year. <laughs> no doubt about that. Tara, have we seen the real Arkansas team this year? You guys have had some uh, tough tests with Cincinnati, obviously South Carolina. Not necessarily tough, yeah. but, but brand programs that we've seen in the past. Missouri State was a close game, or at least for a big portion of it. Have we seen the real Arkansas team mm -hmm. yet? I think we've seen pieces of it. I think they're still – putting together a complete performance, though. Obviously, that Missouri State game for Arkansas was not how they want to be presenting themselves at all. Uh, Sam Pittman said it after the game. He's like, we just got out coached. I completely got out coached. And so I'm sure that they're working on a lot of different things over this week to get ready for this A&M game. OB, I'm going to ask you the same question. Have we seen the real A&M team yet? The offense has certainly not looked the part yet. Well, we certainly hope we haven't. Um because uh, they've been, to be nice, inconsistent. There have been times that they've shown flashes, obviously. But um, the uh, uh, inconsistency in the in run defense and just the, the lack of offensive production, if, you, you hope that's not who they are all year because if it is, they're going to have a hard time not only this week uh, but, but the rest of the season. Tara, help me understand where K.J. Jefferson's taking this game. I looked at his stat line, watched a little bit of that game, but the numbers were phenomenal, throwing the ball. Yep. Yet I know that they weren't able to establish the run until later in that game. K.J. Jefferson, though, what kind of finished product are we getting with him? Yeah, I mean, he's just showing his, his dual threat capacity right now. I mean, he didn't run as much in that Missouri State game. He set a career high in passing, though. So he's just kind of showing off what he can do. He can use his feet, and that's one of the biggest things for him. I'm sure we're going to see that a lot in this A&M game as well. Uh, you know, I talked with Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator for Arkansas, and I was like, do you ever get a little worried when KJ just decides to, like, run through a, a sea of guys and get hit pretty hard? And he's like, no, actually, I love it. It gets the guys fired up. So – that's just what he does. Uh, I, I think that he's he's going to do that a lot on Saturday. Ob, similar question to you. What, what has the Max Johnson effect done to the offense? Again, one little small game, but uh, how did he look? Um, he looked um, serviceable. Uh, he didn't make mistakes, and that's the first thing you want from your quarterback, especially A and M. When uh, at this point, is just a, a guy that can go out and and manage. The game, for lack of a better term, does was he spectacular? Absolutely not. He didn't have any long uh, or any deep passes. I don't even know if they they attempted anything deep. Um, but he but he uh, stayed out. He did his best to keep him out of bad plays, and he himself uh, didn't make mistakes by trying to force things that weren't there. And uh, you know he made a couple of nice throws that that weren't caught, but. Uh, even those plays, you know, they, they weren't going to be a big play with the exception of the one to Devon A. Chain that turned into a touchdown. Tara, help me understand this Arkansas defense. They get after the quarterback at a higher clip than everybody else, 17 sacks this year, yet teams can throw on them. What are you seeing from that defense? Yeah, I mean, I think that the Hogs' primary weakness right now, just in general on both sides, is, is their pass defense. That is the biggest thing that's a, a problem with this team. They're blowing coverages on the back end of their secondary right now. Uh, I think the opponents are averaging over 350 yards through the air right now against Arkansas. It, it's hurting them. Mainly their loss of Jalen Catalan at safety is a massive reason why that's happening. You've got Miles Slusher at nickel who hasn't been in, in any of the past two, two games. He should be returning though for this game against A&M. We'll see if it helps them out. I know that A&M has, has struggled to generate some stuff downfield, so maybe it'll balance out a little bit. But uh, we'll wait and see if Slusher can, can make an impact. OB, I'll ask you about Evan Stewart's effect potentially on this offense. He did not play in the Miami game. He is just a freshman, averaging five catches per game. But yet his ability to stretch out the field, what does it do for the offense if he's clicking? Well, it could really help the offense, obviously. that He's another really good receiver, or at least a receiver with a lot of talent, and uh, you think uh, has the ability to make big plays. 
Uh, we've seen some here and there, um, but more so than uh, uh, th- th- than his presence. You know, A&M has to actually provide enough uh, protection for a guy like him or Anaya Smith. And you know, if you want to throw the ball deep and stretch the defense, you got to give your quarterback enough time to uh, you know be able to execute a play like that. You haven't seen. You haven't seen that. The receivers, with the exception of Anaya Smith, have been uh, hit and miss. Uh, even with uh, uh, Stewart, you can remember, there's been a – I think I can remember a drop, and we all remember a, a key fumble. So uh, you absolutely want to have him in there. Uh, he is uh, one of your best you know, big play threats, and uh, uh, he can make a difference, but can he make a big enough difference for Texas A&M to exploit whatever weaknesses are in the A&M secondary? They haven't I'm, – I'm sorry, in the Arkansas secondary. They haven't been able to do that consistently uh, – this season, so uh, to to be able to pull that off against Arkansas, you're going to have to see more than just Evan Stewart come out and make a, a difference. Tara, last year Arkansas took the fight to Texas A&M. They were, they were the more physical team. I ask you that before I ask you what are the keys to the game. Is it that? Is it just being the more physical dominant team on the lines? Uh, that that definitely doesn't hurt at all. If if they can step that up and be physical on lines, that's a that's a massive part of this team, especially on offense. I mean, Arkansas's O line is exactly what Sam Pittman has always wanted it to be. Right now, they have all five guys with at least four years of college ball under their belt. Right now, they're technically sound. Rocket Sanders can read their blocks so well, and that's one of the reasons that he's been so successful. And their ground game has been so successful this season. So that. Is a, it's going to be a huge part of them winning this game. Obviously, like we talked about with the secondary, they have to step up. Sam Pittman said earlier this week, he can live with guys making plays. He cannot live with guys being wide open and getting touched down. That's their goal is to not have any wide open guys making plays next, this weekend. OB, what's the key for a and Is it physicality? Uh, it certainly starts there. I thought um, Arkansas – was last year uh, was just more – they played harder. I thought it meant more to them, and that's not an excuse. That's that's actually an indictment on A&M. I thought that game meant so much to Arkansas, and, and they they uh, they won both lines of scrimmage. And I think A&M has to be able to, at, at the very least, create a stalemate uh, at the line of scrimmage on defense. Uh, that Arkansas's offensive line may be the best offensive line they're going to face all year. And if they don't do a better job and run defense than they've done thus far, then I would look for Sanders and K.J. Jefferson uh, to run the ball all game. I wouldn't look for K.J. Jefferson to throw you know, a whole lot more than 20 passes, maybe not, not even that much because you may not have to. So uh, A&M has to come in more uh, uh, with a much more physical attitude than they had a year ago, understanding that this game can be won and lost at the line of scrimmage, and you know, play, you know, try try to match Arkansas's physicality because, um, quite frankly, A and M's offensive line is, uh, again, nice way to put it, has been inconsistent. The defensive line's played really well, but they're going again against the best defensive, uh, uh, best offensive front they've seen. Tara Tamish, Olin Buchanan, thank you guys so much for doing it. We'll do it again. Sounds good. Thanks for having me.